On May 5th, ooh, some crazy news shocked the Fortnite world. When solo World Cup champion Booga parted ways with his longtime duo partner Stretch. And many people said that Stretch made a massive mistake, that he was never gonna be able to achieve anything on his own. Well, he proved all the haters wrong because on that Sunday, he finished in first place. And overall, he finished in second place, what is arguably the second like most difficult tournament since the Fortnite World Cup. What's going on guys? Listen, I'm not your regular guy. No, no, no. I'm your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I know so many people have been struggling with depression and I get it, but I want to let you know that there are brighter days ahead. I promise you. So keep going, get that smile back in your face, be positive, you know, and spread that to everybody else. So in this video, really excited, we're gonna be covering one of Stretch's matches and you know, hey, never know. One day we can maybe doing this on you. So keep it up, man. Don't quit. Make sure to drop a like and sub to the channel right now, guys, and leave a comment telling us who you want to see VOD review. Also, if you're looking for more tips and tricks, ProGuys.com has exclusive videos, courses, and information from some of the world's top professionals. Plus, we do have coaching, you know, a live analysis, and, and more just waiting. Also, our ProGuys subreddit is growing really, really fast, and we love for you guys to join. It's a place that you can just ask questions about Fortnite, you know, competitive gaming, or really anything ProGuys related. So check out the links in the description. All right, guys. Listen, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen around the world. It's time to scream this out. Listen, come on, bunch of crunch army. It's time to rise. Say it with me. It's time to sit back. Come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Uh oh, what is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. All right, so in this game, Stretch is dropping at Misty Meadows. He does the smart thing and he checks his surroundings to get a read on where everyone is landing. You know, spotting where opponents land, oh my goodness, it's a must. You know, that information will, you know, drastically change how you play and it could even be the difference between you picking up kills or you being sent back to the lobby, like, as soon as the game starts. <laughs> Anyways, like since Stretch found two big shields and a shoddy right off the bat, he's gonna play a bit aggressively here. You know, to intercept that opponent he spotted landing right next to him. So getting full shields right away isn't super rare, but it's rare enough that you know you could assume your opponent didn't find the same. It's called playing the loot differential. In this case, Ghoul actually does have full shields, but either way, Stretch pushes him. And look, the open door and these walls here are a dead giveaway, man. Stretch rushes up, and as soon as he hears Ghoul in the attic, he does this beautiful peace control play. Woo, placing his walls through the roof. He gets the ramp, and rather than just editing it super quickly, he makes sure to get vision of Ghoul so he can just line up his shot. After he fires, he instantly resets and holds the ramp, then edits again, and he finishes Ghoul off. Beautiful. All right, so Stretch absolutely mopped the floor with Ghoul here using that clever peace control play, which just goes to show that knowing your drop spot inside and out, oh my goodness, it's vital. Not only does it help you get the upper hand loot-wise, but it also lets you exploit the terrain to your advantage. Like, this is your world. This is like your home court. You can do this trick with a lot of roofs all around the map, so try to remember this technique even if you don't land Misty. All right, so moving on. As Stretch continues looting, he finds a blue tack shoddy which he immediately goes to upgrade. Always upgrade your blue weapons to purple when you can, as the stat increase it receives is massive. If you have multiple, I say prioritize your shotgun, but hey, you can do your AR if you feel like it. Either way, you know, good loot wins your games. And upgrade benches are the best way to ensure you've got some. I also want to point out this cheeky play coming up right here. Okay, so Stretch knows that there's still another player in Misty, so he heads into this bathroom and he uses the chest as bait. Why this one? Because you can't build anything here, which will undoubtedly be everyone's first instinct when they walk in. So this, again, harkens back to the importance of knowing your job spot and really abusing his terrain. Although Stretch's opponent doesn't fall for it right here, I'm absolutely sure he's made this strat work once or twice in the past. Okay, so as Stretch farms here, he notices a fight happening nearby, so he investigates. Very patiently, you know, trying to hide his position as much as possible. He doesn't commit to engaging until he sees a big enough opening. Both opponents are making sure to cover their angles, so that opening never really, really comes up. So using the third-person camera, Stretch also notices he's being spotted. Turns out he wasn't sneaky enough, so he plays it safe and he switches up positions. And only 30 seconds later, that's when Scar here comes into his view. Stretch immediately shifts to aggressive mode. Why? Well, he just saw this guy disengage from a fight. 
Chances are that they're in shambles with low health, materials, or maybe both. And with how viable kill points are in this format, you've got to take fights to win. So why not take the ones where you probably have the advantage? Even though Stretch's struggles to, you know, take Scar's builds here, he doesn't let up. After all, you know, Stretch is confident he holds the advantage and he won't let this kill opportunity pass him by. So he maintains pressure while keeping an eye on Scar to track his position. Everything is just so systematic too. Like there's no ramp phasing or, you know, other gimmicks, you know, with Stretch's play here. Just pure step-by-step -step box fighting, you know, including fantastic use of his shotgun and AR to pressure builds. And eventually he breaks through Scar's defenses piece by piece, and then he just finishes things off. So once that fight ends, Stretch heads deeper into the second zone to set up base. I want to briefly mention his loadout, okay? Stretch prefers to carry a harpoon over SMG and even over a second healing item. So that loadout might not work for everyone's playstyle, but in this guy's playstyle, who's Stretch, <laughs> the SMG is a weapon he just doesn't really rely on. To him, the harpoon and heavy sniper's utility is going to help him loads more during the end game than an SMG ever would. And you're about to see how later in this video. Okay, so does Stretch rotate and position himself during the mid game? Hmm. Well, for zones two and three, he prioritizes a couple things natural high ground and being close to center zone. So, being on high ground, of course, you know, gives him a positional advantage, obviously. And being close to the center of the zone will minimize his time spent rotating. But for now, you know, there's not much Stretch has to do, really. You know, he just farms up mats and he just builds out a temporary base with hard materials. Not a small one by one, but something slightly substantial to keep him more concealed and just give him more room to work with in case he does get pushed. And yes, always use either brick or metal. <laughs> when you're going to camp in a base with how easy it is for W key players to do, you know, through wood, you're just making yourself a huge target. Eventually, you know, zone number three arrives, right? Stretch wastes no time and he kicks his rotation into gear. Again, he's looking for a spot with elevation and a position near the center of the circle. And he's found it just up this mountain a bit. There are a scary number of players nearby, you know, so Stretch and pretty much everybody else uses wood walls every now and then to just block off angles, you know, they see players at. But he's not gonna go much further here and just decides to box up. And now it's more of the waiting game. All Stretch does here is just look for kills from underneath his metal cone, holding that edit so he can just get vision of his surroundings. And suddenly, some really overzealous player goes crazy and begins ramping up in front of the whole server. Not sure what they were doing, but they got lasered to shreds. Instead of just editing the cone, Stretch downs into his box for cover before firing and actually manages to snag the kill. Immediately, he pulls out his harpoon and he starts yoinking loot. The harpoon is just so useful during the endgame, and with its ability to grab materials, heal items, you know, and even, you know, mythic loot, you can definitely see why Stretch carries one. In this case, he pulls a few hundred mats and he expands his base with what he can't carry. Positioning center zone ends up paying off when the next circle shows up. Okay, so Stretch barely has to rotate here. He scouts ahead first to make sure the coast is clear. And once he sees it, oh my goodness, he just runs straight in. And if you're wondering why he boxes up here, I mean like right here, you always, always box up guys at the edge for zone four, unless you're already inside, in which case you stay where you are. But that way you're taking a gamble that you're gonna get favored. Though once he's set up, Stretch looks for storm surge tags in an extremely defensive manner. He never has his wall editor for more than a couple of seconds and never goes for more than one or two shots before closing. Okay, well, it makes sense, you know, considering the number of players nearby. Also on the topic of zone congestion, Stretch doesn't seem to care about being on the congested side of the zone. He's confident and he thrives off of chaos. <laughs> Plus, you'll see in a sec that being in a crowded side has its perks as well. Finally, we arrive at the end game, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Okay, so the half in, half out circle is about to show. And while that's happening, none other than Face Sway is up ahead, finding himself in a pickle. Stretch sneaks in some white damage on him and with heavy sniper in hand, heads to finish him off. However, Sway is just too quick with it and he just manages to slink away. Instead of just chasing him down in this crowded zone, Stretch just heads off and just sets up in the new circle. All right, here we go. Zone six is finally here and it's a far one. I mean, it kind of always is, but whatever. Anyway, what should Stretch do here? Launch pad, run it. Well, he sets up a box for a pad, making sure the area above him is clear for launching, but he's not gonna go right away. Why not? Good question. In this meta, and in these stacked lobbies, man, you can pretty much guarantee someone is on the congested side of the zone and is going to use a pad. 
And exactly that's what happened. Stretch hears one go down, so he takes it. After launching, he pretty much immediately just lands for some falling loot he sees. It nets him a few hundred maps, and you might be wondering, was that even worth it? Here's the thing, everyone scrambles to rush to get close to the next safe zone, but it's not uncovered yet. It's still in the storm, so Stretch would rather just chill. You know, wait for it to open, then use his launch pad to get in safely. Once he does get in, I mean, it's very much a standard end game. He tunnels in with some hard mats, you know, trying to stay as close to the next zone as possible. Now, he does play a little aggressively here, you know, looking for a pick that can get him a win condition, something like a launch pad, you know, grappler, or some floppers he can use to take height with. But at the same time, he's not over committing. He prioritizes tunneling and he stays ahead of everybody else as best as he can. When the next zone pulls back, Stretch makes excellent use of O. Leftover builds, you know, by heading back inside of them for cover and saving on mats in the process. All right, guys, so top 15 is here and Stretch is running so dangerously low on mats here. He needs an impact frat badly. That's what he notices. Jolty here fall back into his own builds and with a quick edit, Stretch picks up the kill. And oh man, <laughs> what a kill that was. The grappler, ladies and gentlemen, my goodness. That's the win condition Stretch was looking for. It doesn't matter that he lost health in the storm, the grappler is going to win this. As soon as he can, he starts looking up towards height. Once he notices severe 2C drop in, that's the time to go up. He beautifully follows up with a nasty pump shot to pick up his first high ground kill. And from here on out, man, there's nothing that you can do to stop him. Stretch rides the high ground train all the way to the end, and the 101 does get a little bit scary for a sec, but Stretch has the upper hand. In these 1v1s, man, the high ground player almost always takes less storm damage than the low ground one. The only threat is, you know, if they have floppers. So Stretch does eventually peek and picks up the convincing 7 kill win. All right, well played, well played. What a remarkable game by Stretch, man. That was amazing. Okay, so let's recap some critical factors. Let's go. In the early game, it's crucial to know the ins and outs, man, of your landing spot. If you get great loot and shields way quicker than usual, don't back out of fights, especially if you see great potential for a third party. For zones two and three, prioritize two key aspects of positioning, being on, you know, some sort of like natural high ground and being close to the center of the circle. And in the end game, wait to pad so you can just, you know, potentially just recycle in enemies. Don't be afraid to land and pad for a second time on zone six. And when you start running out of mats, look for an impact frag. Hopefully at the same time, you're going to pick up an item that's going to help you take height. Of course, you know, there was a lot more where that came from. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope you guys enjoyed this amazing video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this vid, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for a lot more. Also, make sure to leave a comment telling us who you want to see Vibe Review next. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Peace.